Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now, just something a little bit different today, just a very quick, simple little video, none of the fancy editing that you see on my other videos. Um, basically, what I'm doing is, I've got a little bracelet here that I've sold, and the customer's asked me if I can shorten it. So I thought, okay, why not? Just stick the camera on, and I'll show you how I do this. <clears throat> So, this is the bracelet here, uh, I'll show you a close-up, then you can see what it looks like. And I need to take about an inch off it. Now, a couple of top tips for you. First of all, if it's like a big curb bracelet, like a big men's bracelet, have a look at the links, because with big links they might not be soldered, and you might be able to get away with just bending one of the links open, taking a few out and then just bending it closed again. So it might be possible to adjust a bracelet without doing any soldering or repolishing. Now, I've had a look at this, and unfortunately all the links on this are soldered. Which means it's a good bracelet, but it means I've got more work to do. So looking at it, uh, the chain in this case features fold-over chain ends. Uh, you get them like little, they look like dog bones and you bend them over. So what I need to do is apply some heat, desolder that and pull it off, cut the chain to the appropriate length and then clean this chain end up and solder it back on, then finish and repolish. So I'm going to swing the camera around onto the bench here and let you have a look at exactly what I'm doing. So follow me. <laughs> so here you can see the setup, I've got the chain here and the end of the chain is being held in some locking forceps there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some heat with the torch and literally just pull that chain off. So, Smith Little Torch and I've got a number four nozzle here just like that. Just turn that down a little bit. I'm not soldering at this point, I'm just desoldering so I don't need a, a vicious flame. I don't know whether you can see that there. So I'm just going to hold it up and I'm just going to apply a little bit of heat. Make sure I get both sides. Just warm up that chain end. And I'm pulling down and putting a little bit of pressure on it. There we go. Simple as that. Turn off the gas. And there we go. And by putting that little bit of pressure on it, it just means that I'm of no danger of melting it. So, let's just get some tweezers here. So, the chain, that can just be popped into the pittle for a moment, just to keep it clean. And this is the chain end here. So, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to flatten this out and just clean this chain end up. Get it ready for re-soldering. And now... I could use a needle file, but uh, I'm lazy, <laughs> so here I've got my flexi shaft and I've got a yellow 3M scotch Bright wheel in there, little radial disc, sorry, and I'm just going just gonna to clean that up, just get rid of any oxide or dirt that was in there, because remember, when you're soldering, it's always got to be clean and it's always got to be grease free. So there we go. Uh, there's still quite a little bit of solder on that, um, but I'm going to apply some more in a moment anyway. So it needs to be six and a half inches long, and um, I've made a mark on my bench here, um, just something I like to do. And don't forget when you adjust in a bracelet or indeed a necklace you need to allow for the length of the clasp as well at the end so I've got the clasp there and I've got the chain end here so if I put that there now the chain end needs to be attached to a link obviously so looking at that I think if I cut that link there and solder the chain end onto those two links that'll be about right so I shall just get a little permanent marker and I will just mark the links there that I need to cut. Now uh, I could use a jeweler's saw but 
these extra links are just going to go straight into the scrap pot so I'm not going to use any finesse I'm just going to use a pair of wire cutters and just snip those if it was a thicker solid curb chain then obviously I'd have to use a saw so just snip that off so pair of Tronix <coughs> overhead cutters there sorry so just snip that and take those links off now then before we do any soldering let's just double check the length again so if I solder that onto the end there yep that's going to be about perfect in fact that is going to be absolutely perfect so take this back over to the bench now just clean the ends up and do a little soldering job so over here so this is the end of the chain here the correct length now different solders um, I'm going to use some string solder here um, this is Hildebrand Easy this is 680 now the reason why I'm using Easy solder is because these links are quite thin so if I start applying too much heat with herd solder I could potentially damage it so you know I don't want to take any chances so I'm going to use some string solder so I'm going to get some on the end of the actual chain links first I'm going to be generous with it and I think my fingers are in, probably in the way here so I'm just going to pop the optivisor on I can see what I'm doing uh, the joys of being a jeweller as you get older your eyesight starts to go so yeah I'm just going to put my thumb over that and I'm going to put some more solder all the way around and then what I'm going to do is inside the clasp here not the clasp sorry the chain end I'm going to put some on the inside of that and just squidge it down and put some on the other side there's still already a little bit of solder on that was on previously I don't know whether that's easy or hard it's probably easy because it did melt very quickly as you saw so there we go um, we're not skimping on it we've got plenty of solder there so let's just shove it all together now and assemble it now remember I need to leave a gap at the end uh, I don't want to shove it right onto the chain I want to leave a, a gap obviously so you can get the the lobster clasp in at the other end make sure that it's nice and equal now the easiest way of doing that is just to squeeze the sides with the tweezers so everything looks nice I've not got any solder where I don't want it so there we go now I'm just going to put those tweezers to one side I'm just going to get a solder pick because when I heat it up I'm just going to press that down with a solder pick just to make sure that it's nice and flat so here we go safety goggles on warm it up now of course this uh, syringe solder this has got flux and cleaners built into it so you see it flames up a little bit first that's just some of the binders burning off and then I'm applying the heat onto the actual bale again optivizer on see what I'm doing now there that's gone now I'm just going to flip it over just make sure that it's fully soldered on both sides just put a little bit of heat actually that's a little bit off to one side I'm just going to I'm just going to line that up a little bit so I'm just applying a bit of heat just squeezing it with the tweezers just making some little adjustments there just lining it all up yep that looks nice so that will just yeah, popped into the pittle just for a moment 
Okay, so the chain is out of the piddle, so just do a little bit of filing now, last minute adjustment. Now, the more observant of you may have noticed, I don't have a bench pin. Uh, everything I do is on the vise. But what I've got here is I have a bench pin and it's mounted to a block of wood. And I've made this specially so that pops into my vise there. I can lock it up and my vise swivels. So I can undo two little catches at either side there. And I can swivel that round. Okay, so it's all on, it's nice and straight, but there's just a little piece of that last link there, just protruding there. Um, doesn't make a difference, but I'm a perfectionist, so I'm just going to do a little bit of filing there. Half round file, Valorb, uh, this is a, a medium kind of, medium to coarse kind of cut. And I'm just going to file that a little bit, just to kind of tidy up that solder joint there. Now, you don't want to sit here for the next five minutes watching me file that, so join me in a second. So, I've finished filing it up. Last little thing, a pair of flat and round nose pliers, and these are brilliant. And I'm just going into that loop there, and I'm just adjusting that, just to make sure that that is at 90 degrees to the chain. It's perfectly round, and there's no dents or anything in it. And these really are brilliant for working with bracelets. If you've not got a pair of these, get some. They are my right hands, I swear. Look at that. That is precise to the millimetre. That is six and a half inches. You don't get any better than that. So, let's clean it up. On here. So, again, I've got my 3M radial disc here. And I'm just going to give it a polish at the end. And this is to get rid of the tool marks because obviously I've been bending this and filing it and one thing and another. So, join me in a second. Now, traditionally, when I'd finished a piece, I used to use Tripoli and then Rouge, but I've switched uh, quite some time ago, and I now use this Menzerna. The Menzerna IP Intensive Polish, I use this instead of Tripoli. And then there's a super finish, a yellow block, which I use instead of Rouge. Uh, I'm using a Ford and Flexi shaft here, and this is a Faro quick change hand piece. Uh, expensive, but definitely worth it. So let's just load up my brush here. I'm trying not to get polish all over the camera. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of polish on here. And this is really good stuff. It's slightly abrasive, so it does help to get out any last little scratches. Uh, and you can go from like a 600 grit paper to this polish. I mean, you can see that there. It's fantastic stuff. It really does give a great finish. So I'm just going to carry on with this and just buff it up and that'll probably be okay. So, back in a second. Now, if ever I've got lobster clasps, something I like to do is just finish them off on the buffing wheel. It just, you, it, you can't beat it, you just get a great finish on it. So I'm just going to pop a bit of the Menzerna polish on the buffing wheel here. And I've got some little suede finger protectors here, and I'm just going to buff up the uh, the lobster catch on the end there. Now, I know a lot of jewellers say don't polish a chain on a bench polisher because it's dangerous. Uh, normally I wouldn't, but I'm only doing the ends. I won't polish the middle of it. Uh, trust me, everybody's done it, uh, and everybody's hurt their hands doing it. So, yeah. Don't polish a full chain on it because it's dangerous. Uh, that's looking nice now. So what I'm going to do now is pop it into the tumbler and literally just leave it overnight. And there we go, one bracelet. Now, just thought I'd share a little tip with you on tumbling or barrelling. Um, this is my barrel, this is a, a Lawtorn 3A, so this is a three pound barrel. Now, I spent years and years trying to get this right and trying to perfect it and trying different tumblers and finally I've got this absolutely spot on perfect. The first problem I did, uh, I didn't have enough shot in. Um, this is about a third full, I don't know the exact weight but it's about a third full. The other thing is, don't put too much water in. Um, if you've got too much water, 
it kind of sloshes about too much and it doesn't have the right effect. Barrel bright or burnishing soap or galley soap, whatever you want to call it. Fresh water, keep cleaning the water. If the water's dirty, all you're doing is just bashing dirt and grit into it, so you'll never get a great finish. So keep it clean. <coughs> so there you go, you can hear the tumbler churning away in the background. And that sound is very important. It, you want to replicate the sound of waves on the beach, which is like a whoosh, 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 whoosh. And that's the, um, the burrings and the pins tumbling round. If it doesn't sound right, it's not doing its job properly. Um, I hope you've enjoyed spending a few moments with me and seeing a little project and some of the thought processes and techniques that go on. Um, hopefully I'll do some more of these and show you exactly what I get up to on my bench here. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've picked up a few tips. Leave me some comments, subscribe, have a look at some of my other videos. And if you want to see more of these, then let me know. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.